All right, Fern Valley Farmers, it's that time of year. Insulated water buckets. I'm going to show you guys how to put these in and give you my thoughts on these. And here we go. Okay, welcome back to Fern Valley Farms YouTube channel. On this channel, we're pure country now. Everything is from animal related to farm related, uh, cooking, country living, country lifestyles, all that kind of stuff. Today, we're doing insulated water buckets because it's getting to be that time of year. It's getting cold out. We're up in northern Illinois, and we got to put the buckets in. It gets pretty cold up here, and uh, you want your horses to have obviously unfrozen water. If they do freeze, you can bust the ice out. But if you don't use insulated buckets, you got to make sure you bust the ice out. They need to have fresh water all the time. If it freezes for a little while before you get to it, that's fine. Uh, but you want to make sure that it's not frozen. And these buckets are really nice, and they're really not that expensive. This is Ringo. This is my six, uh, what is he, six-year-old. Yeah, he's six this year. He'll be seven next year. Um, but anyways, and these buckets don't cost a whole lot to run. I remember one day back in the summer when none of the electricity was working, or was, when nothing was, it was, it was a nice summer day, nothing was running, and I just put all these in. Actually, it was fall. It wouldn't have been summer. It was a nice fall day. I put the buckets in. There was nothing running. I plugged every one of these buckets in. I went and looked at my electric meter, and it was barely moving. So if you're worried about using too much electricity, they're not really that bad. Obviously, they're going to use, they're going to use electricity because they produce heat. Anything that produces heat costs you more money. Um, but they're not too bad. I had seven, eight of them plugged in, and the, the meter was barely moving. So uh, they're not too bad, but they're so nice. You can plug them in, come out, water's thawed, nothing's frozen, it's great. I sometimes won't leave them plugged in all day. I might, I might unplug them in in the morning. And these things are pretty, they're not really insulated, but they stay pretty nice. And when you're indoors, I'll come out here in the morning to clean stalls and feed, and uh, I'll unplug them. They stay thawed all day. Then when I come feed in the afternoon... I will plug them back in so overnight they don't freeze. So I'm going to just show you how I do this. Let me get him, get over there. Get in your stall. <laughs> I'm going to move this camera a little closer so you guys can see. He wants, to be in the, he wants to be in the movie here, actually. So we're going to bring this really close. You've got to get out of the way. <laughs> we're going to put this right here. I'm going to just obviously take this bucket out. What I do, I mean, this ain't too tall. This is what I do. I use, let me put this camera right here so you guys can see this. You need to get out of the way. He wants to be a star. All I do, I use these metal milk crates. These things come in really nice. You can find these. Let me lower this just a little so you can see this. Uh, these metal, you can use, you even use plastic, but these milk crates work really nice. All I do is I stick it, I put the cord through one of the holes. Just run it through, set it in, and you're done. It ain't too tough. I'll show you in a second, but I've got holes drilled in the front or inside these stalls so I can run the cord through it. This horse here loves to pull the cord. He gets bored. In the middle of winter when these guys are all stuck inside, they get bored. So they find things to do, and he likes to pull the cord out. So what I do, let me just show you how I got this here. I have this. Sorry if I'm moving too much. See, I just run the cord. Let me run this. Let me zoom this in. I just run the cord right through the hole in the wall. It's going through the side of the milk crate, and it just comes out the side. But with him, that's why this little nail is right here. I have to put that on there and tap that down because he will pull the cord out. I'll come in in the morning, the cord will be out. It's really kind of annoying. And if it's plugged in, if he chews on it, well, he won't chew on it again now, will he? <laughs> so anyways, what I do is I come out here, pull this door shut, and I just have it right here. Let me tip this camera down here so you guys can see. Let me tip this down. Sorry if I'm moving too much here, guys. It's hard doing this stuff by yourself sometimes. Right there. Okay, so now you can see... I went through my barn a few years ago and I put outlets on all on the outside of the walls. You just did. obviously when it's not plugged in, I just hang them. I just hang it right there. Um, some people like to leave them plugged in all day, all night. Well, I give my electric company enough money, so if it don't need to be plugged in, it's not going to be. Um, but then what I'll do is like today, it's it's only about 32 degrees and they're inside. 
The barn's not too bad. Um, it won't freeze. Some of your warmer barns, if your barn is really, really warm, you might not hardly need these at all until the sub-zero weather really kicks in. Then you're going to want to have them. It just makes life so much simpler. And anybody watching this that's got horses at home, uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about as far as it being cold and frozen water buckets. Busting ice is no fun. So another thing, you don't want your you don't want extension cords coming out of your stall, coming through the windows. You know you don't want any of that stuff because let me retip this video camera here. Let me tip this. Hold on. You start running if you start running cords, you know, through the wall, through the bars here. It just gives something for a horse to grab onto. They get bored really easy, especially in the winter time, and they start chewing on stuff. And if it's plugged in, if they chew on it once, they probably won't chew on it again. It obviously isn't going to kill them, but it'll zap them pretty good, and that'll probably break them with a the chewing habit. So, anyways, you're better off to make this as neat as possible. Instead of having cords running all over the place, I just run it on the inside of the stall, run it right through that hole, plug it in, it's good. Um, some of the horses, I don't, need to, I don't need to hook the wire on the inside because they don't mess with it, uh, but some do. So anyways, that's kind of my story. That's insulated water buckets. I put them in today, it's Saturday, it's about, I don't know, 32 degrees, 33, but some of these nights have gotten pretty cold, so uh, it's just nice to have them. Um, I kind of think that's it. These buckets, depending on where you get them, you can probably find them on eBay. Some of the farm stores are about $24, $25 a piece. I've got, what I got, two, four, six, I got eight. I got eight stall, well, seven horses inside, and I've got buckets outside too because the heated water troughs, those heated water tanks, those really burn a lot. So if you've, got, if you've got heated water tanks outside, I like the heated tanks that have, let me tip this back here, hold on. Let me turn this around. Let me just turn this around here. I've got uh, heated water tanks outside. I've got one for my steer. And the heated water tanks are nice. I've got it where the heating element is in the bottom of the tank. So if you, there's a drain plug at the bottom. And here again, anybody that's got these tanks will understand what I'm talking about. I like the ones that insert. You, you take the drain plug out, put the element in, screw it in the back, and the cord is on the bottom and it comes out the back and it's done. You plug it in there good. Now those, run, those are pretty expensive to run. Those are like 1,500 watts. And I've even plugged those in. And looked at my electric meter, and wow, the meter spins pretty good. So when you plug a when you plug uh, a water tank in, you use a lot of electricity. But you know your water's not frozen. Here again, I'll unplug mine during the day if it's not too bad, and I'll plug it back in at night. Another trick you could do, which I've learned this, because like I said, with you and my whole farm is electric, so I have sometimes five hundred dollar electric bills in the middle of winter between heat and water buckets and everything else. You could take that. I've done this. You bust a hole in that ice, and you plug your tank in. All that water stays warm underneath. As long as there's a good 12, 15-inch hole where a steer or the horses can get their, get their muzzles in there or their noses in there and drink it, it works out great. I see people leave their things in 24-7. They're supposed to shut off. They have a thermostat in them. I don't trust it. Um, some of these, you know, if it's an older one, too, it might not shut off. So that 1,500, that 1500 watts could be running 24-7. And uh, like I said, if you like paying the electric company money, go for it. I don't. <laughs> I give them enough. So I'll plug it in at night. It stays thawed all night. In the morning, there's that hole that's sitting there really nice. That ice insulates it. So I'll leave a hole probably 12, 15 inches just so they can get their nose in there and drink it. That water stays thawed all night. And uh, that frozen top layer insulates it and keeps that water from freezing. It works out pretty nice. And that's one way you can save a little bit on, the, on your electricity. When the sub-zero stuff gets in, comes in, like up here, northern Illinois, it can get, it's rare, but it can get 25 below. That doesn't happen all the time, but 25 below is cold. Average, minus 10, 15. It doesn't last really long, but everything will freeze when it gets like that. So that's one little trick um, to save yourself a little bit of money. Just break a hole in it. Leave the ice on top. It'll, it'll insulate it. The water stays nice and thawed underneath. It works for me. I don't know if it'll work for you. You can try it. Um, so that's kind of that. Actually, and what I what I like about one other thing, what I like about the about the heating elements that you put through the drain plug, horses, cows, whatever can't grab it. I've had steers in the past. You you put the they sell those ones that are about that big around that they got a cage and it sits on the bottom of the water tank and the cord comes out the back and it plugs in. I've come out in the morning. I'll see my one of my steers standing there looking at it and the thing is steaming. 
because they pulled it out of the water tank and it's sitting on the ground. You can't heat the water when the thing's sitting outside. So they pull out, they yank it out. Here again, they get bored. They start messing around with stuff. So I like that, and I take the tank and I push it up against the fence, and the cord is coming out the back, and they can't touch it. They can't grab the heating element because it's, it's in there secure. The cord is coming out the back of the tank through the fence, and you run your cord wherever you got to run it for your power. Those, in my opinion, work the best. I love that. I, I'm done with the ones you set inside. I've seen, I've seen people with uh, inside stalls, and they have those heating elements, too, where you can just you put it. It's, it's round. It's about six inches round, and it plugs in. You just set it inside the bucket. Here again, winter time, horses are inside, they're bored, they take those things and they yank them out. And they're laying on the ground. Well, you're not heating your water when the element's sitting on the ground. Uh, and here again, they could chew on it. It just, horses find anything they can to mess with. So that's why I don't like those either. Uh, either, Because obviously I'm a horseshoer too, and I go to all these places and I see some of this stuff. I'll go to get a horse out of a stall and there's the heater laying on the ground smoking. Because the horse pulled it out of the bucket. That's why these heated buckets are nice. That cord comes out the bottom. You run it along the stall wall, like I did. I drilled a hole, brought it out the front, plug it in. They can't mess with nothing. And see, like right now, he's trying to mess with it to look at. It. He loves pulling on that cord. So him, I gotta, I gotta take a nail and I just kind of tap that cord, and then he can't grab it. So I think that's kind of it. Any questions on this? Give me a holler. Um, you know, text me. Or I'm sorry, leave me a message at the bottom. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Hopefully, you learned something. I've found over the years, I've been doing this long enough. The, the ideas that I just shared seem to work the best and save you a little bit of money. So I'm going to go around and put the rest of the buckets in. I just wanted to show, I don't, you guys don't need to be watch me do every stall. Um, I just wanted to show you guys me putting that bucket in. So I think that's it. So uh, hopefully if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Support the channel. I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up. There's a little bell next to the subscribe button. Click on that bell. You'll get a notification every time I make a video. We've got a lot more winter stuff coming up. We're kind of getting ready to winterize here. I've got my bees out there too. I got to finish winterizing them. Um, get that taken care of. Then we're pretty much done. And here comes the weather. Like I said, we got about two inches of snow last night. So, and that's it. So until next time, YouTube, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.